Now, this is the most important seat of the car. Why is that? Because it's the navigator seat. Now, the rules in stage rallying say that you must have a navigator at all times. You're not allowed to change your navigator during the event. So if your navigator becomes sick or ill, or whatever reason, you're not allowed to change them. So the golden rule for any navigator is you've got to survive the rally. Doesn't matter how sick you are, you could be throwing up in a bag, you don't even have to tell the, nav the driver where they have to go. You've just got to stay in this seat from beginning to end. Because, out with <laughs> because without a navigator, the event's over. So with these seats, I've decided to go for side mounts and the new regulation box section seat frames. Now for new builds, you must use a particular size of box section and inserts. The rules are quite tight with these. Now that still has to be this stuff, which is 35 mil by 35 mil. And uh, I say it all has to be drilled out to accept a certain size of insert. Now I bought these as a kit. It took quite a bit of fabrication to get them where they are, but I'm really pleased with them now. The rules are very, very strict and tight with regards to seat frames. All the information that you need to know is in the blue book. So this is the driver's seat. It's an OMP RS PT. Now I'm really pleased with it. It fits my ass just right. There doesn't need to be any compromise with this seat because it's just for me. Uh -huh. So <laughs> that's the seat that I've gone for. Um, it is much, much wider at the top. Um, so I definitely can't run two of these in the car. Um, and, but that's uh, another reason that I've gone for this seat is that it fits in the available slot just right. Now for the seat, I've chosen an OMP TRS X. Now, why did I choose this seat? Well, the manufacturer says that it is a suitable seat for all types of sizes and shapes of body, basically. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how tall you are or how wide you are, to a certain extent, this seat will accommodate you. It is quite narrow, um, but it's quite wide uh, for a narrow seat. It has these larger harness slots. So depending on how high your shoulders are, it gives a lot more flexibility to make sure that the harness lines pass through those slots to the harness bar at the correct angle. Uh, you may have seen the GoFundMe page. So we've got some fantastic sponsors already. And the idea is if you'd like to sponsor this build, this is one opportunity that you can help out. Uh, uh, and any donations towards this seat, my plan is to make an embroidered sort of backrest with everybody's names embroidered in it. So if you're interested in that, uh, please see the description below and there'll be a link to our GoFundMe page. Any support would be hugely appreciated. And thank you very much to those that uh, have already helped sponsor this seat. Right, you wouldn't believe how many times this seat has been in and out of this car. <laughs> but hopefully, no, I was gonna say this is gonna go for the last time. It's not. You wouldn't believe how many times this seat has been in and out during the fabrication phase. The driver's seat is in for the last time, fingers crossed. That hopefully isn't gonna move. Now, the navigator seat does have to come in and out quite regularly. Um, I still need to wire the car. Um, I still need to fit the fire extinguisher. And all that runs underneath the seat. So this does need to go in and out. But I'm going to fit it now so that I can fit the harnesses and make sure that they 
uh, all in the right place and adjusted to a to me don't know why me but just me there you go you've got to have a datum haven't you right let's fit this seat now all seats have to meet the regulations of 8855 to 1999 these seats do have an expiry date however thanks to motorsport uk they have got a a new rule that says if it's for basically club motorsport here in the uk and not international fia events they will extend the life of these seats if they're in good condition by another two years so as long as we don't trash these seats they're good enough for 2028. So let's do an unboxing. How cool is this? So this is an OMP first two inch harness in black. Look at that. Gorgeous. So this is your buckle. Oops. Now the rules and regulations with regards to harnesses are just as strict as the seats. They need to meet the uh, regulations. So this is an FIA standard 8853, 2016. Um, and this is a six point harness. So not only does it have to be the right, um, the right standard, it also has to be in date. Here we go, look all hologrammed up look so i've got my hologram with my standard not valid after 2026 now just like the seats uh motorsport uk have been really nice and if you are just doing uk uh, events not international fia events you can extend the life of these i think by four years i could be wrong i have to check that uh, which means that these seat belts, as long as they don't get trashed or are in good condition, we're good till 2030. So that's not too bad at all, is it? Now, I was going to say, why did I go for two inch straps? Now, the shoulder straps have to be two inch because this is a hands compatible harness. Now, the hands is the thing that goes over your shoulders, connects to your helmet and stops you from getting effectively whiplash when you get into an incident. And this two inch strap needs to fit in that groove on the hands device. Now the rest of them, you can get three inch straps, you know, harnesses that go down to two inch on the shoulder straps. But it looks like most modern seat belts now, or harnesses, are all going to just two inch. So not wanting to, you know, wanting to stay bang up to date. That's what I've gone for. Ugh, it's gone cold. Right, now all that's left is the shoulder straps. Two ways that I, that I know of that these are allowed uh, to attach to the back of the car effectively. You can use, as at all the other connections, the eye bolt with the clamp. Um, but notice on this one, there is no uh, folded over stitched area. That means that you can actually undo the whole thing. Remove that and you can wrap this around the harness bar. Ooh, almost did it the wrong way. <laughs> so uh, there is a very specific way that this attaches to the harness bar. Um, and scrutineers do get quite upset if you don't do it the right way. <clears throat> I remember we did an autocross event and the scrutineer, that was, that was his thing. He'd look at it and go, you've, you've threaded your rear harness around the harness bar the wrong way. If you don't do it correctly, you can't race. Okay, so this was a, an eye opener for me. Um, so the way it goes is your strap goes underneath the harness bar back through your i suppose it's called a buckle back down like that but then to lock it it goes back over the top
<laughs> and through like that. Ta -da! And so it's nicely locked in place. And this buckle needs to be as close as practicable to the harness bar as possible. What they don't want to see is it way up here with this massive loop. You're going to end up with end up. You're going to end up with an awful lot of excess, especially on the rally mini, because the harness bar is right behind the seat. You could, if you really wanted to, not advisable, cut that down. But the problem is then, if you ever want to put this harness into another car, it may not be long enough. Um, so the best thing to do is is to roll it up and just store it on the top, like that. Right, let's do it in the car. <laughs> Let's concentrate now on the navigator's foot well. Um, here, obviously I've got all the, or I will have, all the services going underneath here. So this is the fuel line. This is the cable that's gonna go to the fire extinguisher suppression system. Here's the brake line that's going on the top, that's irrelevant. Uh, but I've still got a uh, battery cable to go under there. Um, and electric. So um, what I'm gonna have to do is I've made this template up. Uh, some old sign that I had. Um, and the idea is that I can then bolt the navigator's footrest in place. Now, why do you have a navigator's footrest? It's surprising actually how much your feet flap around and move around when you're sat in that seat. And you really need to be in this tucked position, almost like a fetal position where, when you're a navigator, because you're, you're holding on to your pace notes on your, on your knees when you're sat. So not only does it help you brace yourself and stop your legs from flying around, it gives you a, a, a nice stable position for you to be able to do your office job effectively. Now, the one thing that a navigator must be able to do is reach the uh, power cutout switch, the fire extinguisher pull. I know that's, I'm happy with that, but they also need to be able to activate the horn. Who knew that? Uh, and most of the way, and most people have a button on the footrest. Woo. So anyway, there's my footrest. I've got a sheet of aluminium steel. This is three mil. Uh, I just need to make sure that the holes are in the right place. Then I can bolt it down, fit the footrest, blah, blah, blah. Come on, you know the drill by now. Let's crack on.
So I've got this off eBay. It's just anti-slip tape that you use for putting on your steps. Why don't I just rubbish at everything I do? Fantastic. Right, I reckon my Navigator uh, office is good to go. It's okay. Um, but I'm missing something. Door bar. Obviously, I need a door bar. Door! I need doors, don't I? Well, best crack on with that. Anyway, see you next time.